As we mentioned, the Pope's first stop on Thursday will be in Washington, D.C., where he will address a joint session of Congress. But first, on Wednesday, the Pontiff will hold midday prayer with American bishops, including Archbishop Lori. He'll also attend the Mass of Canonization of Junipero Serra. On Thursday, after addressing Congress, the Pope will then travel to St. Maria's, where they've been feeding the needy for decades. 11 News Kate Amara tells us why breaking bread on G Street is such a big deal. When does a lunch break become a powerful political statement? When you're Pope Francis and you decide to stop for takeout here. But everything can be served at, at temperature. This is something they do every week outside Catholic Charities in D.C. I come every Wednesday when I come to the library with the family. Salisbury steak, mashed potatoes, hot salad dinner rolls. St. Maria's meals served up right here on the sidewalk. They've been doing this for a long time. Every single Wednesday, we serve about 300 meals here. These are people who are homeless, people who have no place to go. People Pope Francis wants to meet. While the Holy Father is here in Washington, he plans to visit St. Maria's meals. I we'll really say to the people who come, you're important to me. I think because of him coming, maybe there are more volunteers today because we're trying to walk with Francis and do as he would do. What will the Pope actually do when he drops in for lunch on the 24th? According to the agenda, he'll bless the food, bless the program. Eating is not officially scheduled, but Francis is known for improvising. The Pope is coming basically to your house for lunch. What do you serve? Well, we're actually, we had a little tasting party yesterday. We looked at things to be, make sure they'd be good, so we had some chicken dishes and some pasta dishes. And we're thinking about basically what will be easy to serve, but very healthy, very nutritious, and also something people will really enjoy. Regardless of whether he ever lifts a fork, the Pope will have already dished out his message by sandwiching the stop between addressing Congress and a speech at the UN. He'll leave the halls of Congress, the most powerful place in our city, and come to the place where people are maybe the most vulnerable and most in need. Perhaps a signature moment for this Pope. And folks here will have a seat at the table. So you like to see breaking bread with the Pope? Yes, I will. <laughs> yes, I will. This Catholic Charities visit is the last official stop on the Pope's D.C. agenda. After this, he travels to New York. In downtown D.C., I'm Kate Amara. Pope Francis is known as the People's Pope. The pontiff says that he became a Jesuit because he was attracted to their sense of community. He chose to live in the Vatican's St. Martha guest house and not the papal apartments because he said he needed to live his life around others. As Archbishop, Pope Francis washed the feet of convicts on Holy Thursday, a tradition he continues as Pope. And an interesting note, Jesuits, they promise not to strive for any high office in the church. Therefore, there are very few Jesuit cardinals, which is why Pope Francis's election was so surprising to the Jesuit community. After his trip to Washington, D.C., the pontiff will then travel to New York, where he will meet with the United Nations. Then there will be a mass at Madison Square Garden, all after a trip to Central Park. On Saturday, the Pope will travel to Philadelphia, where on Sunday they'll actually have mass on the Benjamin Franklin Parkway. Needless to say, a logistical nightmare for the city of brotherly love. 11 News reporter George Lettuce will be among the millions of people expected there and has some tips on how to negotiate all that traffic. Tie-ups right down the Vine Street Expressway westbound. Say a little prayer if you're headed to Philadelphia for the Pope's visit. It will be a logistical nightmare. It will definitely be that, yeah. Drivers will probably not be fond of the city of brotherly love. Philly expects about a million out-of-towners to be weekend residents for the papal events, which include a huge public mass on a parkway right in front of the building that made Sylvester Stallone famous. The punch in the gut logistically starts with road closures Friday, September 25th through the weekend. In downtown, that means traffic boxes where large sections of the city will be closed off to incoming cars. It's nice that the Pope's coming here. Like, this is great. Hopefully I get to see him. But, but on the other hand... On the other hand, it's going to make it difficult for the people who have to go to work. Like, I work night shifts, so it's kind of... It's kind of hard for me to find transportation. Then there are the highway closures. While 95 will stay open, it may not be pretty because large sections of 76, 676, and Route 1 will close. 
And if you want more evidence that Philadelphia will essentially be in a bubble that weekend, well, let me show you. The entire Ben Franklin Bridge, one of the major thoroughfares between South Jersey and the city, will completely shut down. Only three lanes of it will be open only as a pedestrian crossing. The Secret Service says this is necessary for crowd control and security of a pope that prefers to be with the people. The reason those perimeters are necessary is so Francis doesn't have to be encased in bulletproof glass, which he will not allow himself to do. The city's mass transit system, SEPTA, will be running, but the best advice if you're coming up, get to Philadelphia as soon as possible and wear your walking shoes. They should still come. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great thing. I mean, it's a blessing to have someone that important come here. And if you're planning on traveling to Philadelphia, here's some news that you can use. The City of Brotherly Love will have dozens of large screens set up throughout the city for those hoping to catch a glimpse of the pontiff. The Pope will speak mostly in Spanish, but the big TV screens will provide English captions. You can bring food and drinks into the security zone, but there are some restrictions. Check out our website for those. And lastly, cell phone service may be sporadic, although major carriers will boost service throughout the weekend. The audition process is like American Idol. The rehearsals are grueling and there are hours of homework each night. And yet these singers say they're not getting ready to perform. They're getting ready to pray with the Pope.